everyone and welcome to today's webinar. First of all, I want to say happy International Translation Day and what a suiting webinar for this uh, very special day for us. Thank you very much for taking the time from your very busy schedules um, and uh, we hope that you are all doing very well and are staying safe wherever you are. Today's webinar is titled Maximising Your Income as a Certified Translator and it will be presented by Dylan J. Hartman. Hello, Dylan. Hello, welcome. G'day. Um, Dylan's a NATI certified Thai English translator, and he's also the founder of AccuDocs, which he'll talk to us a little bit about as well um, in the webinar. And uh, I think I've said enough. Happy International Translation Day again, and uh, over to Dylan. Thank you very much, Dylan. Thanks again um, for, for having me here today, Fatih. Um, and, I, and I wanted to start off by saying, I'm so sorry for sending you those slides late. You know, I'd planned to spend a few days preparing for this talk, but I got absolutely <laughs> slammed with work on, on Monday. Monday morning, they sent me uh, 15,000 words um, translation. So I stayed up until midnight finishing that. Um, I also had about six half a dozen Nazi translations and a couple of small jobs due on, on Monday. Next day I woke up at 4.30, which is a bit of a sleep in for me. Um, I felt, felt like, felt really bad all day. Um, I had a handful of Nazi jobs, quoted for two big jobs um, with the earliest deadline tomorrow. Um, I accepted a six and a half thousand word job uh, translation due tomorrow as well and a 12,000 word localization due Saturday. So things are crazy for me at the moment, but I'm here and thank you for your <laughs> thank you for your kind invitation and thank you most of all to everyone for joining here today. Um, as Fatih said, this uh, talk is directed at, at people who are just starting out in translation. Um, if, if you are a seasoned professional, look, I'd, I'd really like to hear your comments and, and opinion about things as well, um, because we're all in this, in this boat together. Um, yeah, I'm happy to learn just as much as from you guys as, as what I'm able to give. So um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dylan Hartman. Um, I have a Master of Studies degree from the Australian National University. Um, I am a NITI certified Thai to English translator, managing director of AccuDocs, um, and the director of DJ Hartman Translation PTY LTT as well. Um, I'm not like most other NITI certified translators who I meet. Um, and, and this became a, a, as, as a shock to me. Um, before I even became Nati and joined Authored and started meeting other certified translators, I had this this high, let's say, opinion, this prestigious breed of, uh, of translators who were certified by Nati. Um, see, I, I'd, I sat the exam six years after be, becoming a professional translator. Um, I had to return to Australia for a job in 2017, um, and we decided to stay. Um, the, the agency I was working for told me they had a million words um, of mining content that needed to be translated. And the only way for me to accept this job is that I had to leave Thailand. Um, now, my eldest daughter at the time was six years old. And it was the start of the year, so I, we were, we would, we had already enrolled her to go to international school in Thailand. And I thought, okay, international schools—they start their semester in August. I can bring her over here um, and give her a head start in school. So yeah, I, I brought my my daughter, uh, eldest daughter, along with me. Um, and you know what? After putting her into Australian school, after two weeks, she called her mum. Um, I said, Mom, yeah, I miss you, but I don't, I don't want to go back to Chiang Mai. I really like it here. So all, um, yeah, my, my wife packed up our, our condo, uh, sold the car, put everything in a shipping container, and um, we decided to come here to Brisbane, move, move here to Brisbane. Now, also, before, this is all before um, even sitting in the NITI exam, um, I, I'd never even thought about uh, becoming certified because I, I was already earning, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars a year um, from international uh, agencies. 
Um, and so there was there was no real point until one day I was browsing the the directory of translators on prozee.com and I saw another certified uh, translator in my language pair and their advertised rate for more than double what I was charging. Um, so finally, I had a financial incentive to get certified. Um, yeah, that was that was the only reason why. Um, so it just. I'll continue with the presentation. Just a, a note throughout the presentation, um, there will be little question marks in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Um, at that point, I'm going to stop. And if anyone has a, a question, Fatih, if you could please uh, let me know and, and we'll use, utilize those opportunities to talk. Of course. Thank you. So um, here we go. Let the numbers speak. Um, these are my draft sales figures from the last financial year. Now, um, throughout 2020, 2021, work was very consistent. Um, but you, you'll see some fluctuations here. And that is not because of uh, fluctuating work at all. That is because uh, I'm, I'm really bad at sending invoices on time. So. Um, as you might see, you know, July, um, I had sent invoices probably 60 days before that, and they all paid, got paid once um, in, in July. Uh, or in November, I hadn't sent any invoices for probably a month or more. And yeah, they all came in, in December as well. Um, it's also worth noting that in 20, if this, if this was the 2019 financial year, the final figure would have been a lot closer to 250,000. Um, but thanks to COVID and our fluctuating currency, um, 2020, 2021 was a fantastic year to be earning US dollars. So, I mean, if this, this alone doesn't convince you to be working for international agencies, well, wait and see. Um, the other thing is this this figure 300k is not quite right. So this next one is probably closer to reality. This is a, a, a sales by product service summary breakdown. And what I've done is highlighted um, as a point of reference, uh, those jobs that I've received from Australia. So I've highlighted Nati extracts, 4,700, uh, full translations uh, from Nati clients, 3,200. Um, also official Australian clients. These, these are big uh, organizations and so on, you know, 8,350. Um, and down below in the not specified section, uh, that's where I've recorded all of my sales from Akidox as well. So the Akidox Nati jobs was about 5,700. But what, point of reference is from my total sales over this period, uh, less less than 14% was from Australia. Um, so why would anyone in this country restrict oneself to the Australian market? Um, you know, I've, I've heard many were concerned about the low rates that are offered and so on, but um, you know, I, I just don't understand. Does anyone have any questions, Patti, to start off with? Um, there, there is one question, but uh, that's just, uh, I think, in Nati related. So there is a question that says, regarding Australian Nati interpreting Chinese English, how many times can we try the test in a year? Uh, I'll just say that please refer right. to the Nati website. So um, you can follow, sometimes they run once, twice, three times a year. So that's a question for Nati. Unfortunately, we don't have that information here. Um, yeah. So why restrict oneself to the Australian market? Maybe we don't even know that we have access to an international market, uh, Dylan. Um, well, often, often I hear some other, you know, colleagues state, well, all the all the advertised rates are so low. But what I'm trying to say is, if you only see the advertised jobs, they're always low. Um, the point is that the clients have to be able to find you, um, and and let's say. I hope one of the outcomes of, of this presentation is that 
some of our Nazi colleagues can can make themselves more available to the international clients, the international agencies, and so on. Definitely. I mean, I tried to look into the Turkish market when I first started uh, about a decade and a half ago, and the rates were so low, it 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 um it kind of turned me off, to be honest with you. But then I I never thought about the potential Turkish English work in America or in Canada or in England. I didn't even think about that. I was just concentrating on um, my load speaking country. But uh, you know, yeah. you're, go you're going to tell us about all the different marketplaces around the world. Um, sorry, some other questions coming in. Uh, are Nati credentials recognised worldwide? Yeah. Uh, I think you'll talk about that. Maybe not officially, but they definitely add a add add some uh, pizzazz to your to your name. Yeah. What kind of documents Absolutely. do you translate for international clients and agencies? What kind of documents? Well, I'll get into this uh, a little bit further, but I, I, I wouldn't refer to them as documents because it's rarely that you're ever sent a document um, these days. Most of the time you're, you're sent, uh, a, let's say, a package um, that you will import into your CAT tool and, and translate the, the, the package and send it back off to them. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that regarding uh, CAT tools later on as well and how to handle the work that you're being sent. Um, it's better uh, to refer to credentials what... recognized worldwide was another question. Yeah, so in my, um, let's say, blurb about this presentation, yes, um, while, while you don't have to be certified to, to handle any of these work, uh, any of these jobs, um, NATI credentials are respected around the world. Um, and many agencies will have a tick box. Are you certified? Are you certified by the ITI in the UK or the ATA in the USA? Um, often they also have NATI as well. So we are we are re respected and renowned across the world. We just have to get ourselves out there. It's quite comfortable, you know, in our in our safe space in Australia, our, our, our protected space where we've always got the NATI clients coming in. But it from my experience it's not enough to support a family um, just relying on on birth certificate jobs how do you decide how much to charge in the international market we'll get to that yes I, i've got we'll a, we'll a, get to that, yeah. a section I've got, I've got a section on rates so we can talk about that as well um do you mainly translate into english speaking markets I only translate into English, which is my native language. And thank you. I'll Nearly proceed. all approaches from, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you yeah. one more and then I'll let you go on. Nearly all approaches from international translation agencies, for example, through ProZ, et cetera, are too low to be worthwhile. I actually don't know how I actually don't know who to initiate and approach overseas agencies or clients. There you go. There's something that you're going to be um, elaborating on as well. Absolutely. So this is exciting, and and I, I really hope that um, people can come away from this this presentation with with something to do. Like we'll have a call to action, and I hope to see uh, major improvements in in all of the participants who are here today. So I will proceed. Um, but before we go into the details of, let's say, addressing a lot of those questions that have been asked, I'd like to ask other uh, participants here, what is your perspective of our profession on translation? Do you love it? Um, why did you become a translator? Did you become a translator to help others? Um, are you passionate about words, language, and translation? Um, See, our, our perspective in translation plays a huge role in how we address the market, how we posture ourselves and how our clients see us, and what eventually we take home from it as well. Now, for me, I can say that I am not a translator. No, 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 no. I am not a business person. <laughs> not at all. That does not define me. I'm not a software developer. No, absolutely not. Um, what am I? I am a, a father. I am a husband. I'm a cyclist. 
I'm a, a creator of literature, of music and art. It, it's so important for, for us to find our grounding. If you expect to be able to sit in front of a computer for hours, days, weeks on end and maintain a passion for translation, you're absolutely dreaming. Um, and, and especially some of the, the, the content that we have to translate. I mean, it's not literature. But noting that I, I, I create translated literature, I, I, do have to, I do have to edit this statement. So I'll go again. Uh, I am not just a translator. <laughs> These are the things that make my, give value to my life. So as I said, I'm a husband, I'm a father. I, I, I play music, um, I translate literature and I cycle. These are the things that I, you know, get up and look forward to doing every single day. These are my life passions. This is what keeps me going. I strive to produce maximum effort just so I can spend more time doing these. Now, what is translation to me? Translation is the means to afford a, a lifestyle that I love. It's simple. Plus, it's something that I'm really good at as well. That, okay, I, I can't let out that point. Uh, it's something that I'm really good at, but I became a translator simply to increase my monthly earnings. Now, how did I become a translator? Well, at the time, I was uh, working for the International Affairs Division of, uh, of Mef Aluang University in Thailand. Now, um, it, was a, it was a really good position. Um, relative to my uh, Thai colleagues, I, I was earning almost double what they were earning, but still it was about US, $1,000 US a month. Now, if I had any plans to come back and visit my parents here in Australia, it, it wouldn't have been possible. So I, I realized, um, having studied language at university, I could actually start picking up work as, as a translator. And in little to no time, I was doubling my, my university salary um, just by, by translating random documents. And at, at that time, um, that was working with just agencies in Thailand. Um, and so I, I started off earning, I think about a hundred baht per page. And, and in, in Thailand, uh, jobs are, are paid per page. And so I'd get a, a full couple of pages or whatever and um, translate that for a hundred baht is about three US dollars per page. So I started at the bottom. I started right at the very bottom. Um, eventually I had at one uh, agency owner who was quite close to me. I'd, I'd done a lot of work for her. Um, she said, well, actually, why haven't you started working on the international market? You can get a lot more than what you're getting with the ties and, and you've got a good potential. So that is, that is how I, I started translation. I, at university, I, I would say I, I never liked doing translation, but it was something that I was good at. I was always very good at it. All right, so I'll read out some of the comments here. Uh, I'm an IT certified translator from English to Vietnamese. I'm a mother of four children at primary school ages. Due to my busy schedule, I can only work whenever I can and when the kids are at school or at night when they're asleep. Recently, I'm so interested in working outside the Australian market, but I have no idea where to start or look for, the, or, or what to look for. The webinar is just on time, and I thank you for the information and experience that you are going to share. Thank you very much. Um, got another comment here. I've done some work with UK agency and they love being able to send work, which gets done while it's overnight in the UK. So I know that can be a plus. Yeah. Yep, yeah. you're gonna talk about all the different time zones and how it's a yeah. it's a 24 hour pretty much day for you. Um, how do international payments work? Do you have any re, re, recourse against non-payers? Recourse against non-payers? Uh, do you employ other uh, translators? So I'll, I'll answer the first one. I, in in let's say the ten years I've been full time, let's say professionally translating, I think I've only had one instance of a non-payment, um, 
and, and that was with a, a subcontinental agency and from then I, I just stopped uh, accepting work from from that that area so I, I only I, you have to let's say there is a process you you should really do the background check on the agency before you accept a job often if it's too good to be true it's a huge um, you say workload you've never heard from them before and they're offering you this amazing rate if it sounds too good to tr be true it might be too good to be true so what we have on on prozee.com is the blue board which is a let's say a rating directory for all of the uh, you know registered agencies in the world um, and if you have a bad experience with an agency you can give them one star and say why and, and they have opportunity to reply to you as well so i mean it is a, a two-way conversation and if you give a, a bad uh, rating to an agency often that is the best uh, motivation for them to pay up um, the other thing i have had some slow payment issues and the best strategy that i had was just to call them because often translators are so used to being tied to our desks and sending millions of emails um just getting on the call on the phone and finding out what's happening helps a lot of the time what was the, the second question about uh yes so was it do you employ other translators i think you've got a section on that okay. too coming up yeah. Um, I'll, I'll have a section about building a team. Yep. Uh, love it. Yes, yes, yes to most questions that you've asked. I'm passionate about linguistic, linguistics, words and literature. Uh, here's a question. What strategies do you use in dealing with people from different countries where cultural differences and gaps are usually confronted? And I've got another question following that. Is it mandatory to have NATI certification in order to work as a freelance translator in Australia? Do clients or agencies require translators to present proof of their NATI certification, or can we work with Australian agencies without the certification? Thank you. Um, the quest, first question about cultural difference. I've, you know, I, I work for dozens and dozens of multinational agencies, and they're all communicating effectively in English. I, I there there are noticeable cultural differences um, and I, I'll talk about my experience of working for a major agency when uh, that goes through a, a mer merger and acquisition by a bigger agency and then all the teams change. We had a major disruption when that happened, but um, I, I'll get to that a bit later as well. Second question about uh, being certified and working with Australian agencies. I, before I was certified, I had looked, tried to apply to Australian agencies and I always got the response that you have to be certified. So I, I assume that Australian agencies are, are, say, compelled to hire certified translators. Yeah, pretty sure that in Australia, NATI certification, especially if you want to work for agencies, um, is mandatory. All right, let's move on and, um, you know, we'll ask the other questions as we go. Thanks, Fatih. So, um, getting back to it, translation allows me to earn money from a skill that I excel at. Um, now, I, I found this quote, like, work like you don't need the money, love like you've never been hurt, dance like nobody's watching. Well, that does not apply <laughs> to me because if you think about translation, effectively, there is an unlimited supply of work out there. You could work 24 hours a day if you want to. Um, the beauty of the translation industry is that you are, are paid for the amount of work that you do. And there's not many other professions out there like that, that you say, you know, I, I, I translated 10,000 words and I, I'm paid for that, that amount of words. Um, so how did I, let's say, what I'm getting back to here, with a primary focus on earning money from translation, I found the most lucrative fields that I could comfortably handle and made them my specialization. So since uh, graduating from ANU, I, had, I began translating clinical trial material or life sciences. Um, and once you get the terminology 
let's say once you start understanding the terminology terminology it's quite simple um and there is a never-ending paper trail requiring translation so um my my master's degree was was not in translation wasn't in language um i did a master of studies in uh with, let's say majoring in applied anthropology and participatory development um I, I had always wanted to work for, for DFAT or, 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 or at least an international development agency. But um, the year that I graduated, I don't know if, if many people remember, 2014 was um, the year the coalition came into power. And not being political here at all, but if you remember, the very, very first thing for the, the coalition to cut was the foreign aid budget. And so anyone who was looking to go into aid or development or basically had no chance because I think there was 15,000 people who lost their work, who lost their jobs. Um, it's like something like they cut $5 billion off the aid budget. So that fortunately, um, before graduating my master's, I'd been moonlighting as a translator for, for several years. And so I was able to switch quite easily from, from being part-time um translator to you know full-time translator with a master's degree from ANU which really boosted my credibility um now how did I get the opportunity to get into life sciences well uh, an agency who I'd been working with for for several years um, gave me the opportunity to test and they said hey we have this life sciences material I, I'd been sent that same test once in 2012 and I was quite naive at the time. Um, and I, I, I let's say, I attempted it. Uh, I didn't submit it. I told them, no, uh, this is too technical, too difficult for me. Um, and I put it aside. The second time in, in 2014, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll give it a serious go and, and translated it. And yeah, I, I passed with flying colors. Um, so I also got the chance to become an expert in, in mining translations. Um, in the year 2016, uh, Thailand's biggest gold mine, which is an Australian owned company, was forced to shut down by the military junta. Um, and so this became a big international scandal. Um, and, and like I said, the agency told me, we've got a million words for, for, for someone to translate, but you have to be outside of the, the country. And that's because of the you know, information security um, let's say threats we could say um i i also do investment finance material but it's tricky uh, however it pays really well uh, i try my best to stay away from legal or engineering it or any other fields that i'm not comfortable with and i i think that's that's you know a good rule to stick by if you're not comfortable with it it can be a lot harder and, and and waste a lot of your time trying to get it right do we have any questions um i think we can keep going thank you very much okay cool so how did i get this opportunity wait well here we go uh prosy.com or pros.com um is the world's most active online community of translators um it's also the place where agencies and sometimes direct clients will go to find translators. But how is it possible to become be, be noticed in a language pair with thousands and thousands of other translators? Um, the first thing is you, you should really be a member. And that gives you, uh, let's say, a, a higher ranking than non-members. Um, and the second is you really need to be active with kudos. Now, kudos. Um, is a, a strategy that prozy.com came up with. Um, for translators, if you have a terminology question, if you're stuck on something, um, you can ask the other translators in your pair to a question and they will be scored and given points for answering. So it really gives um, people an incentive to help one another with tricky terminology questions. Now, did you know that the directory on Prozy prosy.com is also ranked and a major factor is how many kudos you have. So kudos lift your rank in the prosy.com directory. Um, you should really try to make 
the top 10 because clients aren't going to be looking further than the first top 10 uh, translators. But aim, of course, for number one. And I, I really wish that the Nati directory was like this because what it does is it lifts uh, practitioners who are active and active and involved um, to the very top of the directory. So uh, a client can be assured that if they contact any one of these top 10 translators, uh, they'll get a response almost immediately because they are the most active um, switched on practitioners. Now I've, I've done a little video. What happens if you go to the prozee.com uh, directory and search for a Thai to English translator? Thai to English and click search. Woohoo! <laughs> yes, I am at the very top of the Thai to English directory on prozee.com. Now this has had an incredible impact on my, my work um, and my success. Now, if you come into my profile, you can see I've, I've uploaded a video. Now, in my case, that is me speaking Thai, introducing myself in Thai. I, I think it's a way of, of proving that I'm quite capable in this language. Um, see. Now I'll also show you that I've, I've customized my profile as well. So often, um, often translators will just leave it as the default, write a couple of lines about themselves um, and expect clients to be interested in them. Well, no, um, prozee.com uh, has, uh, allows you to uh, insert basic HTML as well. So it's now, basically like your website, isn't it? Yeah. I, it's it's very limited, but you can you can do a, re a restricted number of HTML things. So a website you can do you know countless things, but here um, you can upload pictures. You can format your text. Um, how have I gone back there? You can format your text. Um, and and so on on my page, I, I can say why my best your best choice for translation. I was awarded uh, literary awards. I majored at the entire university. I'm certified by NATI, I'm a, a, an OSIT committee member, I've got a, an ANU degree and I'm a registered company. This is another um, good point to make because being NATI certified is a, a, a very prestigious um, award and, and it's, it's still regarded as one of the hardest translation exams or tests in, in the world. And so I, I've gone on to say, why do you need a certified translator for your project? Put like Put quite simply, we have the skills required to pass the exam, um, and many don't. Um, and we are required to complete regular PD activities in order to keep our certification. Quality assured. Uh, I then go on to say, choosing a non-certified translator or someone who questions the need for certification is like gambling in a game that you'll never win. Don't risk working with amateurs. Demand to see certification. So. We really need to be proud of our, our NATI credentials. Um, now, this is where you market yourself, but also explain what the NATI certification is to the international clients so they can go, oh, well, here's a, a, a translator who has this NATI certification. Yes, maybe not, maybe it's not officially recognized around the world, but it, you know, people yep. do know what it is and it definitely gets, gives you an upper hand. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, I, I do continue on in my website. Now, uh, it's it's probably worth noting that um, when I was actively using my prozee.com profile to, to get more clients, right now I, I've got too much work. I'm, I'm still turning away more jobs than I'm actually accepting. But um, before then, I had a, a lot more concise and a lot more targeted. Now I've got it. it it's expanded a bit just as a, it's a, a digital business card to, to, to some extent. But um, I, I go through and explain my, my own background. Um, I, I talk about NATI, I talk about my specialization um, and my primary workload. I then go on to talk about uh, PD. And here I've, I've, I've uh, demonstrated my yearly output. So since 2019, you know, 800,000 words in, in 2018, 19, uh, 1.4 million words in 2019, 20, 
nearly 1.2 million words for the last year. Before that, I was um, <coughs> keeping monthly uh, output records, and, and you can see. So, what what's interesting to note is uh, it's a how it has been a steady increase. And so back in 2014, maybe I was I was doing you know 30 between 30 40 thousand words a month, maybe yeah 10 thousand words a week, and it steadily improved. Um, so if you were to step straight into the the translation industry and expect to be doing 100,000 words a month, um, it's going to take a long time. And that's why I said earlier as well, my biggest regret is not starting earlier because there's nothing, there's nothing to stop you at all. And of course, at the end, I've got more, more of my name in print. Uh, thank you very much. That's a very good presentation there um, on the website and what you can do with it thus far. Got a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, this Pro-Z seems similar to any other freelance website. I'm finding it so difficult to compete with other more experienced translators. Many websites say how to compete and stuff, but none of them do not indicate clear answer as there is no solid method. Is there any particular you can tell us how to, is there any particular thing you can tell us how to obtain jobs? Is it, it is just so hard to get in as a starter? Absolutely. It is hard. Um, but like I said, the, the number one thing is you, you should be aiming to get yourself at the, to the top of the directory. And the only way to do that at the moment is by answering as many kudos as you can. Um, it's interesting that the the year I, be, I became the number one Thai to English translator on Pro-Z in the world um, was the year that I asked the most kudos questions as well. Um, and therefore, by me asking questions, you know, three questions a week, that didn't only um, bring up everyone else in the directory, uh, but it, it kind of broke the ice for other translators who might have not wanted to use it before to, to become acclimatized and accustomed to asking questions, asking each other questions on, on, on pros.com. So it, it, it is an interesting, um, you know, reaction. If, if everyone else is asking questions, well, I can ask questions as well. And so I was able to um, earn the most points and get myself up to the top as well. And for, um, for profile, I, I, just let me finish this, uh, for profile completion on ProZ.com, there are countless guides and videos available on the site. Um, and so they have the, the, the helpful guides to get your, your profile up and running. Now, um, the, the Asuka mentioned about other freelance sites. I mean, I, I haven't... I haven't heard about anyone becoming successful by using Fiverr or something like that for translation, because I, I see that there's a different kind of clientele they're targeting. Um, however, with a prosd.com profile, you'll get the attention of, of the major agencies and, and recruiters who are looking for professional translators. And I think that's the difference. Thank you very much, Dylan. Um, just this this uh, practitioner may have come in just a little bit later and he's asking the question, what is kudos? Um, so can you just okay. very quickly just fill in that bit again? So yeah, kudos are um, points that are awarded for you correctly answering a, a translation terminology question. So uh, anyone on prosy.com can ask a kudos question. Um, you, you can set the difficulty, whether it's pro only and for points um, and yeah, we, we can build up each other's glossaries, um, answer difficult questions. And for each each question, you can be awarded two, three or four points by the, um, the asker of the question. So um, kudos have a direct impact on your ranking in the directory. Uh, thank you very much for that. So professional solidarity in a way though, isn't it? To an extent, um, yes, of course, but to my next slide, um, what we can talk about is um, to sell yourself, you need to find your best attrib attributes and, and truly maximize them. Um, 
it goes without saying, Fati, that we are in direct competition with translators in our language pair. Um, we're all fighting for the same jobs with the same clients. But like you say, what about professional solidarity? Um, the principle of professional solidarity is not a non-complete non-compete clause um, that needs to be made clear um, so for what makes me the most desirable uh, versus the competition in my language pair well this is is matter of fact I, I'm a native English um, speaker I'm Australian born native English often uh, international agencies will, will state that as a requirement you have to be native in the target language um, I have years of in-country experience. Um, I attended international school. I went, spent some years in university and then several years working there as well. Um, I have the top education qualifications from uh, ANU, which it, it doesn't even have to be uh, translation related. Um, and finally, these are all in order of importance, mind you, um, I'm NATI certified. And the certification is just another thing that helps you stand out from the crowd. Um, and it's worth noting that certification is not essential for professional translators. Um, so, you know, you don't have to wait until you're certified until you start translating. No way. You, should, you mean yeah. for, for in the international market, at least anyway? In, in the international market, at least. Um, you know, I, I wish I'd started a few years earlier because I would have been ready and had that experience under my belt. Um, because I, I feel with, with translation, the more you do, the more your experience, you, you will have seen certain types of documents before and become more familiar with the content. Um, and you do a better job translating in that way as well. So for every job request I, I sent, I have used this uh, cover letter template. Um, now, over the years, it, it's pretty much stayed the same format. Um, but I have made minor tweaks and minor changes along the years. Um, so uh, I'll just read it out while we're here. Um, dear whoever responded to me uh, uh, or sent me a, a job request, thank you for your interest in working me. Uh, here I'll respond to their questions. I'll, I'll tell them my rate immediately and how long I expect the job will take. I go on to say, hiring me as your tight English translator ensures a level of professionalism, expertise, accuracy, and integrity with your project, backed up by years of industry experience and credentials from the top universities. Wow, that, that sounds amazing. Having nearly two decades of experience with Thai language combined with tight English certification from NATI, experience from since high school, as well as bachelor and postgraduate specialization in Thai studies, the quality of your project is assured. Uh, furthermore, my work is thoroughly checked and is written in a style that matches contemporary discourse so that an English speaking reader will not even realize that the document is a translation. Now, that is a major selling point, And that is why often um, agencies will require the, the native English um, aspect for, for or native, sorry, target language. I go on to say I, I'm an Australian citizen with a vast amount of experience living and working in Thailand and a level of cultural co comprehension comparable to few. Um, I go on to say my credentials and my certification. I'm a member of OSIT, um, a, a committee member for OSIT and was the secretary as well. Um, I specialize, go on to state and state my specializations um, in issues relating to applied anthropology international de development, NGOs, refugees, migration, human trafficking, uh, indigenous people's rights, effects of mining and resource extraction on local communities, social impact assessments, land tenure and environmental management. Fatih, do you know how much work I get like that? Um, next to none. But those were my, my um, major in, in my master's degree. So I, I still think that these are my honest specializations but it is not the main source of my work, not at all. Um, so I go on to say I have a broad range of experience in many other fields of translation and with consideration of my training, I'm able to adapt my skills to the translation of most types of material. So I'm a generalist. Um, with regard to this, the bulk of my work consists of technical translations such as clinical trial, mining and finance documentation. Uh, as a work platform, I use fully licensed version of WordFast Pro and SDL Trados. 
I think it's just called Trados now. Um, and yeah. thank thank you to the agency for their consideration and working. And this kind of template has been hugely successful over the year because what you answer their question in the very first sentence. Um, you know, they will they will always send you an email asking your rate and and if you can accept the deadline. Don't don't stuff around. Just answer that straight away. And if they're interested or they get a couple of let's say interesting candidates, um, they will read through the rest of the email. Most of the time, they don't go further than the first line. Um, so, does anyone have any questions about CVs and and cover letters? So we can see that there's a lot of knowing who you are and what you do and what you can do. And it's a, there's a lot of yeah. self-marketing involved here, I think. Um, yeah. So there's, there's definitely something that we can, we can learn from your approach uh, to the clients. Um, some questions that have come through, what CAT tools do you have licensed for and use, which you've just answered there. Um, how about agencies or recruiters not on prozy.com? Um, is that something that you'll address later? I'm not sure, but most of the I mean, if they're not, honestly, they they all, in my experience, uh, all the major agencies have contacted me uh, and they've found me on the prozy.com directory. Um, yeah, so prozy.com is pretty much the go to place for translation yeah. uh, freelancers. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, what if we don't have a lot of experience? Build it up. <laughs> Build it up. Yep. So slowly, slowly get there. Uh, yep. Do you also write your cover letter in Thai, but you're translating right. into English? So um, yeah. So I, I be... only work into English, and you know, I started working with Thai agencies, and when I discovered that I could get work from around the world, um, you know, I, I thought it was good getting one baht per word. Uh, now that that's around about three cents, <laughs> it was three cents per word. So it, it it's not not it was not a very good idea to it wouldn't have lasted very long uh, working for Thai agencies. So they Thai agencies in 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 my experience address the, the local Thai market only. Um, quick questions. This is ProZ.com related, so I think you can answer these. I've signed up okay. on a Pro Z. I've signed up on Pro Z on a free membership to begin with. What steps would you recommend to consider before becoming a paid member? Um, so my experience, the 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 week I paid for an annual subscription on on Pro Z um, I got the biggest job that I'd ever had all my life. So um, the reality is, if you're not a paying member, you're not going to be sent jobs. It it just works like that. But I mean, along with that, you need to have a fully completed and um, you know maximized profile as well, um, and have everything all all ready to go. And then you pay for the the membership, and then you know you'll get clients coming to you, or you'll be able to quote on jobs. I, I think one of the restrictions on on free memberships is that you have to wait twenty four hours until you're able to quote on a job. So I. I, I don't think you have any chance on, on getting any jobs on, on until you start paying. Uh, very good. One more question, then I'll let you continue. I've got other questions coming in, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to ask them throughout so that we can keep going. Uh, what program do you use to track your workload? Because you were talking about your different jobs and how many thousands of words and so on. Um, is there a program that you use to track your workload? I. I'll get to this down the track, but I, I use my accounting software these days. Um, I used to use um, a an Excel spreadsheet, and, and you would have noticed when I showed my pros.com uh, profile, it went from monthly word counts to annual word counts, and that's because you know um, with QuickBooks, I, I wasn't able to do it as as easily as I could with a an Excel. But don't, <laughs> from my experience. Don't stick with Excel any longer than you need to. Um, move to accounting software as quick as you can. All right, I'll let you go and continue. I've got more questions, but I'll save them for later. Thanks, Dylan. Excellent, no worries. So, I mean, just when starting out, um, we need to send hundreds of emails um, and fill in countless application forms. We need to sign, you know, an, a numerous NDAs, which are non-disclosure, non-disclosure agreements agreements um but 
where do we find agencies to work with? Well, have you heard of the Slater LSP index? Now, um, this this list here is is last year's one, the 2020 one, and it's a bit outdated because um, SDL and RWS have actually uh, merged. But here you can see, and and you know, if you Google the top 100 LSPs, you'll be given a list of and, and the ranking of all the world's let's say foremost agencies. And there are a couple of Australian agencies on that list as well. But what you can do is um, go through and, and target the agencies that you want to work with. Um, so in 2019, my um, major work source was RRD or RR Danelli, and they were based in uh, Hong Kong. And I was getting about $150,000 uh, a year from this agency. Now, all of a sudden in, in 2020, I believe, they were bought out by SDL. Um, and suddenly the, the project management team moved from Hong Kong to Mumbai. And there was, there was huge disruption. Um, they, they, instead of sending, you know, continuing to send all the work to to me and my team um they decided to start you know outsourcing to other other translators and 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 my closest team mate was also working on the uh qa step and she she would send jobs back every every single day because they they were lacking quality so we it was it was a, a terrible time in December 2020. Um, you know, work had stopped coming in. I was in negotiations because, of course, uh, new and new negotiations, and you know, I was getting I, I think 14.85 cents US cents per word, um, and they were going to try and ask me to accept nine cents per word. Um, it, it was it was end of the world, but. What did I do? Um, I came up with a, a solution. Rather than just offering translation, um, I started offering other services. So I um, offered to them, okay, I, I will utilize my team. Um, instead of just doing translation for 14.85 cents per word, I'll offer you translation and editing using my, my closest teammate um, for 16.5 or uh, one six five cents per word sorry 16 16 five cents a word you, you get what i mean um so here we can see uh the range of rates that i charge for international agencies and this is all in us dollar um from eight cents down the bottom to 18 1850 cents um on on rare cases i have charge more uh, than this and for Australian uh, Australian organizations I, uh, I would charge more than this as well but it's important for us to identify your, your target client are they Australian requiring NATI credentials if that's the case we'll ask top dollar um, are they international and they have no care whether or not you're certified the way, the tip I, I would say to work out your rates is like this. Um, first, research the average rates for your language pair. Now these are going to be lower than you would expect, but I mean, it's somewhere to start. I've got the H, uh, HTML here, or you can just Google prose rates. Um, once you have that number in mind, um, you can then work out your own rate like this. So how many words do you think you can effectively translate per day and how much would you uh, like to earn per day? So um, you divide that amount by the number of words and you can get your ideal rate. So if I wanna say I, I wanna earn uh, $350 a day US um, and, I, and I can effectively translate 2,500 new words per day, my rate would work out to be about 14 cents per word. And, and you know, that's, that's still a rate that I'm comfortable charging. Next thing I'd say, 
do not quote in Australian dollars. Um, Australian dollars mean nothing to, to nobody in the international market. So quote in USD or EU or uh, British pounds, depending on the agency's location. Um, the other thing is USD is acceptable worldwide as well. Finally, be careful. Be really, really careful because there's a tendency to, let's say, advertise, if we're starting out, advertising our rates quite low because we'll get the job. Um, but it's very hard, almost impossible, to raise your rates with agencies after you have been on board, boarded. I have been able to do it one time in, in in my experience after graduating my master's degree, becoming certified, I was like, okay, yes, this is my reason to to lift my rates from, from quite low to what it is today. Um, and it was like a special case scenario that they accepted and agreed. But um, I, I recommend only contact the, the top super agencies uh, when you're experienced in negotiating and you're ready to handle it. Because if you, for example, um, if we go back there, if you tell TransPerfect that your, your rate is eight cents per word, you're never, ever, ever going to be able to charge 12 cents because they'll look at their records for you um, and, and you're just throwing away potentially, you know, 10,000 words a day um, at, at a good rate because you went in low. So be be careful with with who you choose to to advertise rates with because you can never change them. Um, like I said earlier, offer a, a variety of services. Um, so my top rate there, eighteen fifty, is um, for translation, editing, and quality control, and that is uh, with with three separate languages. And um, the one I, I, I use most often is is sixteen fifty. For translation and editing. Now I'm I'm completely transparent with the the agencies or, or the client that I'm working with, saying, okay, this is my rate for translation. It, it'll I say fourteen fifty. Um, it'll be too expensive. They they're, they're more willing to go and hire someone for you know eight or nine cents per word. But if I then say, okay, well, I'll offer you translation and editing for this marginally marginally higher price they're more willing to accept that. Or if they want the full service, look, they can get translation, editing, and quality control. We used to offer um, a lot of, of DTP, which is desktop processing. Um, that's because Thai um, is a language that is, is pretty bad with OCR. Like OCR is optical character recognition. Um, so if someone uploads a, a scanned PDF with Thai, it'll get it about 95% right, um, but you know, it still needs to be edited by a human being. Um, I do localization. If uh, you remember back to the one of the first slides, I think just do doing Australian English, I got about $45,000 last year from that, which is okay for a, a job that's a piece of cake, really. Um, LQA is language quality assurance. That's that's proofreading, effectively. Um, cognitive debrief is, is another service where, um, let's say, pharmaceutical companies have a questionnaire that they've translated from American English into Australian English, and you have to go out and and ask um, people who have this disease. Uh, this questionnaire, and it, it's a not a linguistic task, but it's part of the linguistic process. Um, and so that's another opportunity that you can you can take. I also have a, a, a sad face next to MTPE because it is a, a task that I absolutely hate, but it's the way the things are, are, are moving in our industry. And and to say that I don't use um, machine translation would be a complete lie because our um, translation tools, our CAT tools have the mach machine translation showing down the bottom anyway. I also go on to say that um, you should quote a, an hourly rate for tasks that aren't charged per word and set your minimum to half an hour. Uh, Often they won't ask, agencies won't ask if you have a minimum, but if you assert your minimum, most of the time they're going to pay. 
Do we have any questions, Fatih? Uh, yes, indeed. I've got a few. Um, just keeping in mind that we've got half an hour left on the clock, so we'll get through these questions as quick as we can. Cool. Uh, all right. I'll start from the top over here. Where did you learn to use CAT tools? I'll, I'll get to CAT tools a bit later, but um, it, it is a process. It, it's a necessity. Um, you have to do it. So I learned on the job. Um, when you're sent a job that requires a CAT tool, and if you don't use the CAT tool, you can't take it, well, it's better to learn how to use it than, than reject the job. Yep, thank you. More on that coming up. Uh, what are you going to put on a cover letter when you're just starting out? Should students who haven't finished their studies even be starting a ProZ account and answering questions? Of course, yeah. Um, the earlier you start, I, I don't know if you remember, but on the directory itself, it says uh, on the directory, the year you signed up to pros.com. Um, so the earlier you sign up, the, the the better it looks for you as well. If it says that you've been on pros.com for you know 15 years, it's a lot better than being on there for one year. Um, so get out there, be as active as you can, as early as you can. And about writing a cover letter, I think all of us have attributes that are unique and are presentable. That, I mean, I, I, I can't, you can use my my cover letter as, as a an example, but um, come up with your own words, come up with your, your own um, description and, and why they should choose to work with you. That's right. So it's something that you start building on. I think what can Absolutely. start off as a as a couple of paragraphs might end up turning into an epic like yours, uh, Dylan, <laughs> over the years. Um, all right. Uh, do you charge GST on top of those rates? You don't charge GST to uh, non-Australian clients. Yep. Very good. Thank you very much. What are the top translation agencies? I think you gave a list uh, of those uh, from Slater. Yep. Um, so, uh, so it is uh, between Transperfect. It's between Transperfect, uh, RWS, and Lionbridge at the moment. The three big ones. Yep, and you can go on to Slater.com, right? Was it to to see those? Yes. Um, and they're they're constantly changing as well. So have a look at those. And they're on the slides that um, we've uploaded. You can download as well. You can have a look. Sorry, just going to quickly go through these. Do you offer lower rates in line with work volume, number of words increasing? Uh, I, I, I avoid it um, because if if you start giving volume discounts, well, that's that's the only rate that the, the that the agency will ever offer you. Um, so I will analyze if if the agency sends me a, a big job, um, I'll ask for the the source document. Um, I can run that through my, my own CAT software and analyze it against my translation memory. Um, more times than not, I'll have hits, and so I'll be able to offer them a, a discount based on the fuzzy word matches. I'll, I'll get okay. to that a little bit down the track when we're talking about uh, CAT tools, but I'll, I've got good. a demonstration where you can see, yeah. Some of these um, terms that Dylan's using, uh, if, you use, if you've used CAT tools that you'll be familiar with, so in the international market, uh, Dylan is going to talk about that. It is quite important to get our heads around CAT tools and how to use them. Um, but and, and more and more these days uh, in Australia, we would be as translators needing to use CAT tools as well. Um, but more on that coming up. Again, just a couple more very quick ones. If you can just answer them quite quickly, that'd be great. What OCR tool would you recommend? I use Convertio, but I'm not happy with the result. Uh, we use uh, A B B Y Y, Abby, um, and you know it, it, it's not perfect, but it, it does the job. Um, we realise that um, if you match the formatting of the source document, um, and it, it'll export it okay, but when you import that OCR document into your CAT tool, um, it gets it gets overloaded with formatting tags. Um, and I, I can show them when we get to the cat tool slide. But um, the way to work around that was for us to export the OCR export as um, plain text and then make sure we clear all the formatting. So it's it's just working with the plain text. Um, 
import that into our um, cap tool and then have the DTP team, desktop processing team, fix it up into a document again. So it required a couple of steps, but that was the only way to fully utilize the, the translation memory and cat tools. Thank you very much. And with cat tools as well, there is a brief mention on cat tools coming up, but I think um, we can work towards uh, some training towards cat tools as well in some future uh, webinars. Because uh, I think uh, in this modern age, translators definitely need to start working with CAT tools, um, both nationally and internationally. Just a couple more that I think you can, uh, that you'll be um, addressing. Editing, quality control, et cetera, carried out consecutively by different people. Because yep. if you're an individual translator working alone, wouldn't be editing and proofreading already be part of the that's translation right. process. That's right. That's coming up in your teams. Um, do you do everything yourself? Again, you'll be answering those questions. Uh, do you use ABN to issue invoices? How do you issue invoices to foreign companies? Um, ABN is uh, for Australian businesses. You wouldn't be using your ABN internationally, I wouldn't assume, Dylan. How, no, would, you well, I mean, foreign, how would you invoice foreign companies? Often, often the foreign companies, the big ones at least, have uh, an invoicing, um, let's say, part on their website where you just fill in the the, the, the spaces and click send. Um, but if you do have to send a, a physical invoice, um, these days I use QuickBooks, the accounting software. Um, before that, I had a, a template which I would fill in the individual invoice number, fill in the details, and send it off. Um, it's always good to include your ABN, of course, uh, because you, you still do have to tell the ATO about um, income from foreign sources. That's right. You still have to declare your foreign earnings. Don't forget, people. It's not just uh, money straight into your pocket. Don't forget that. Um, all right. Uh, I've got quite a lot of questions, but I will let you continue. We are okay. coming we'll... close to 3.30. So I'll continue. What about CAT tools? Um, like we uh, briefly mentioned, familiarity uh, with CAT tools is essential to work with any major agency. Now, um, there are a couple of CAT tools worth mentioning. So I, I, I have always used WordFast Pro, and the only reason I, I, I started and stuck with uh, WordFast is because my entire computer system is all Mac. and um, WordFast is the only one that works natively on Apple computers, so that's why I've stuck with WordFast. But compared to the others, the the um, workflow and the user interface is is really simple, and, and I like it a lot. Um, Trados, it used to be called SDL Trados, now it's just Trados. Um, I despise, I resent Trados. I, I've wasted countless hours trying to work it out because it's so complicated but if you if you are working with an agency who also uses Trados you've got no other choice you have to use Trados now because um, I was one of the you know lead vendors for Thai to English with SDL uh, I was given a, a discount to buy tr Trados and I, I, I paid 50 US dollars for the latest version of um, of Trados and when it, it updated to this version uh, I think the update Upgrading cost was was a hundred dollars, so it, it's it's <laughs> that's not going to be available to everyone. But that was how I, I got. That was the only reason I bought Trados. Um, now I I do use it when I'm sent Trados projects. Um, there's also SmartCat, which you know is, is similar to all the other um, cat tools. Now the basic principle of cat tools is all the same, um, where the uh, the software analyzes the the document that you're putting into it. Um, it compares each segment with the translation memory that's connected to it, and um, you know it, it gives each of these segments a percentage match. If it's a hundred percent match, if it's a hundred one percent match, which means the the segment before it and the segment after it also match. Um, you know, there, there is different pricing that you would have for each type of segment, which I'll show you next. So um, each, these days, agencies like to use their own proprietary software as well. But if you have a, a favorite software, like I said, I, I use WordPass, or you want to utilize your own translation memory, 
you can always ask the agency for them to send you the XLF file um, and you can work on it and for you to work on it offline as well. Um, there's a couple of major agencies that have their own online cat tools and I absolutely hate them um, because you know you, in that sense you can't use your glossary and I've, I've spent you know nearly 10 years building up a glossary that I that I treasure um, because it, it saved me so many times. Now cat tools will will highlight glossary words and and um, as you're typing they'll get inserted automatically it speeds up the process so much um, so yeah if you can if you can ask the agency to work off work on the file offline sure go for it now um here we are here is a recent example of a 10,000 word job that I was sent um, the agency will send me an analysis summary before I start the job here you can see Term-based matches, uh, those 101% uh, matches that I said. Um, oh no, sorry, that's confused. We got 100% matches. Uh, we had 21% of the document. Um, 85 to 94.99, 13% of the document, and so on, and so on, and so on. And they've highlighted down the bottom here, the number of new segments for this 10,000 word job is only 12%. So what I'll do is I'll copy this and put it into this uh, amazing Excel calculator that the agency also gave me, um, and it'll work out the cost. So um, on the top left, you can see the translation rate per word is 165. Um, now, repetitions, paid repetitions, uh, under the 10% column, the first 10% column, for this 10,000 word job, I got paid a dollar. Um, paid 100% match. So there was so many, what is it? 20 something, 21% uh, of the document was 100%. Um, I, I earned $86 from it. Um, for the next ones down at 85 to 94, so they, they would have a couple of words that need changing in the segment. Um, I earned, what, $70. $56, $100, and $200 for the segments that had no matches at all. Now, here is an example of what it's talking about. So on the left-hand side in the tie, you can see uh, some numbers that have been highlighted red and crossed out, um, and then a date, another number and a date that has been highlighted red and crossed out. So this is a 96% match segment. Um, the tools scan each segment and highlight the difference. The red ones are the parts that need to be taken out. The green ones are the, the, the new parts that need to be added. Does anyone have any questions? I'm sorry if, if this is too technical for someone who's unfamiliar with translation tools, but this is uh, your, your typical segment. Um, the, the numbers there, uh, one, with brackets uh, formatting tags. So that would probably be bold in the original document, but um, the cat tool doesn't show the formatting for you if you choose not to. Thank you very much, Dylan. Now, uh, we, we do have another module called Introduction to Translation Technology. You can have a look at our website where it introduces you to the use of cat tools. Those of you that are not familiar with it, that's a very good place to start. Um, and uh, that was designed and delivered by Macquarie University. Uh, by uh, their translation technology lecturer there, Sarah Forger. Um, so please have a look at the website. It's called Inter Introduction to Translation Technology, and um, that can be that can get you started uh, in your CAT tool um, journey. So as we can see, CAT tools are, are front and center in uh, working uh, as a translator, as a professional translator. Um, just a few questions, uh, if I may, quite quickly. Um, sure. Do you use Memsource quite quickly? Uh, no, I, I haven't. Don't have a need to use it. Very because good. Um, let me let me just add. Sorry that um, most uh, cat tool files are compatible um, with other programs. So if someone sends sends you a Memsource file, you can work on it with uh, Trados or Wordfast. Um, so so this 
I should have added before this 10,000 word job that I sent, um, it took me about three hours to complete. And if you can see on the bottom left of the, the table here, it was worth 500 US dollars. So, I mean, while you didn't, I, I didn't earn the full amount for the $10,000, um, it's in everyone, especially the client, end client's best interest to use this kind of software, especially when you're dealing with repetitive documents. Um, so it speeds up the, the translator's work time. Um, it costs the the client less, um, and it it improves the situation for everyone. This um this one segment, okay, it's a ninety six percent match. So if I was paid a hundred percent for it, it's about what, about one hundred and fifty words or so. I, I would have earned what twenty dollars or so. But because it's a ninety six percent match for changing these two two numbers, I think this one segment earned me $7. So, I mean, it is, it is, of course, it, 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 you know, speeds up your time, but also your ability to earn from, from the translation as well. Thank you very much. Uh, how do you get paid by your international clients? Do you have a PayPal account or do you set up uh, an account to receive US dollars? I'll get to that in a second. Very good, thank you. Uh, some CAT tools you have found good. I think you've already mentioned that. You use yep. WordFast anywhere and uh, Trados as well. Trados um, and yes, yeah, and SmartCat as well. Yeah, so. SmartCat. It just depends on also what the agency is working with as well. So it'll be good Absolutely. to kind of learn a few of them and get your head. Although although the um, the basics are quite similar. The fundamentals are similar. They all have their different uh, nuances as well. So it'll be good to, and, and most of these, I don't know about Trados, but WordFast and SmartCat, they have uh, free versions, basic versions to get started yeah. and get, start playing around with. So you can, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. Start playing around with a few things and, and get your head around how a cat tool works. Um, so, and then you can then, you know, once you've got your head around it, you can start purchasing um, uh, them. Uh, the biggest later. benefit is with with uh, documents, repetitive kind of documents. So when you're dealing with official documents, these are like clinical trial documents. So the, the source is always using a standard template and the uh, author of the document just enters in the other details. So all the template fields are you know, 100% matches. Um, and you're often still paid just to read over those matches and make sure that they're okay as well. All right, thank you. Look, um, we've got a few more to get through. Very quick question, just uh, quite briefly, what kind of professional insurance do you use, if any? Uh, as an OSIT member, you are eligible for uh, professional indemnity and uh, public liability insurance. I, I can't remember. Um, the name of the uh, the, the company, but it, it, yeah, as an Ozit so member, you you get a good price. Yeah, Ozit has that information on their website, and uh, you get a quite a good discount um, uh, as an Ozit uh, member. All right, let's continue. We've got about ten minutes left. I'm sorry if I can't get to all the questions, um, but hopefully he does answer them in the upcoming slides. Um, okay, let's go uh, on. So please, uh, my apologies if I can't, can't get through to all your questions. It is quite a popular topic, Dylan, so please keep going. I'm, I'm glad to hear. So, I mean, one option to make serious money in uh, the translation field is is to start an agency and, you know, get the jobs and, and take 50% of the profit and, and send the jobs off to other uh, translators. Now, I haven't ever... Um, appreciated that so what instead i've done is to build a team um, now you may be familiar with that number two person because she was um on number two on on the in, in fact on the pros.com directory now within your your team it should be a clear demarc demarcation of roles and so you see, I've given myself number one. I have the best qualifications, certified experience. The team lead can score the most work. Um, they have the best, most desirable qualifications that all agencies are looking for and typically get, get every job that gets sent to them. Um, however, having a, a reliable number two is, is priceless because um, your, your, your go-to might be just as capable as you, but 
doesn't have the certification, for example, um, they don't have to live in Australia or the US, but it's so important that they have to be reliable. So my, my number two, Teresa, she's a native bilingual, um, half Thai, half English, um, based in Thailand. So if I get, a, a, if I'm fully booked and unable to take work, um, I'll say, hey, Teresa, are you available for this? I'll take more of a um, project management role. I'll, I'll take part of the, the rate and, and send her the job and the rate. But the first thing and most important thing is, of course, to get uh, consent from the agency who's sending you the, the job as well. Now, for, for major jobs, uh, I have a number three, uh, sorry, a number two, his number is number three here, is Tana. Tana is highly experienced. He's exceptionally talented, um, intelligent, but he's not a native English speaker. Um, so all of the work that he helps us with, it has to be proofread. Um, but he's always ready and able to help when big jobs come in. Um, Non-native linguists will find it very difficult to get work from US or UK based uh, Western agencies. Um, also part of our team is uh, we have a DTP team, which I said desktop processing team. Uh, they work when required. Uh, we go through quite a few because DTP is one of the least satisfying jobs um, in the entire translation uh, process. Why? Because they're, they're correcting errors made by a machine and it could just be little spelling errors or so on. But um, these little errors can be the difference between a 100% match that possibly earns, you know, 10% of your rate or less than 85% match, which you're earning 30 or 60% of the rate. So. Offering uh, quality DTP to agencies has, has been a wonderful um, earner for us as well. I'll continue uh, because we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, the next thing is uh, we're based in Australia. All the work comes from overseas. Um, you know, what to do? Well, most of my work comes from New York. Um, I find if I wake up at around 4 a.m., which is 2 p.m. in New York time, I can catch most of the jobs and respond to most inquiries, all often while I'm still in bed. Um, halfway through the day, Hong Kong comes online and they begin sending work. Uh, then Mumbai, then Geneva, and then London, and then it potentially is time to go to bed. Um, but this is the reality. Not much work comes in from Australia. If it does, it's a, you know, a typical ID document or so on. Um, so you need to be active um, and able to respond to uh, project managers in New York or, or London or, or Hong Kong and so on um, pretty pretty quickly. Because I think if you wait more than five minutes, you will have lost, lost the job. Um, just before... I uh, started this presentation. I got a notification from from Lionbridge. You know, uh, there's a six hundred dollar six hundred dollar job. Um, and and yeah, I had to quickly do it on my phone, check what it was, and yeah, I, I took it. Um, because if you leave these jobs, they, they just go to the next best person who's ready and waiting to go. Um, keeping organized. Uh, it's so important to have some kind of structure in your emailing system. So a highly organized email inbox is essential. Um, prior to now, I used the Apple Mail where you can use different colored flags and you can have different smart mailboxes and star various emails. Um, I now use the email platform called Superhuman, uh, which makes things a lot easier and a lot quicker. Um, but Superhuman is a, is a paid service, but I figured if I can save an hour um, a month, utilizing superhuman then it, it, it's worth it and i think i'm saving more than an hour a month from just emails um so have a look at that if you like in work so you mustn't forget about jobs that are in progress um you know make sure that you always check what jobs are active um and be, make sure you know you're keeping controlling keeping in control of your deadlines um the other thing is invoicing, invoice regularly, weekly or monthly. Um, I'm the worst at this. And as you saw from one of those first slides, the, the work isn't uh, inconsistent. That's just my my poor invoicing um, skills. So I, I'm aware of this and it's something that I am 
trying my best to improve. But right now I have a, an inbox full of purchase orders ready to be invoiced. Um, so yeah, I, I call it a, a form of forced savings, but that's a very bad attitude to have. <laughs> um, I will continue. Use Thank accounting you. software, not spreadsheets. So I in I think in our early careers, um, it, it's it's a bit difficult to 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 go and and start paying you know thirty dollars a month for QuickBooks or Zero Reckon, so on. Um, but as soon as you can, it makes your life so much more simple um, dealing with with bookkeeping. Um, so I would encourage everyone to get on board. Um, and, and incorporate these accounting systems into your workflow. So when I get sent a job and it's confirmed with a purchase order, um, I'll create a quote and enter all the PO details into the quote. Um, when the job is finished at the end of the week or the month, I'll create an invoice and all those quotes will be ready to add to the invoice. And you just click button and click send and it'll go to the customer. You could also check what um, quotes are open and what hasn't been invoiced yet. Um, I had <laughs> I had set aside this week to do invoicing and and like I said at the start um, of of this presentation I, I've I've gone ahead and accepted another you know twenty thousand words so invoicing will have to wait wait another week for me um, getting paid uh, wise so formally transfer wise gives the best rates for international transfers uh, what you do is create an account. Select your currencies and you'll be given bank details for each of the currency. Um, PayPal is okay for small transfers, but the fees are terrible. Um, bank transfers give you the worst exchange rate and the maximum fees. Um, there are other options available, but WISE is truly the best um, these days. What about the Nazi jobs? Um, and I hope, Fatih, you can let me finish this last bit um, before we answer any more questions. So what do you do? when you're tied down with tens of thousands of words due in no time and a customer suddenly calls you up wanting a Nazi translation. I've noticed on the Nazi directory that many practicing certified professionals take their phone numbers um, and their emails off the directory. Well, I don't think that's very, that's the best way to do it at all. Um, so what we have developed uh, from my experience being you know, run off my feet with these huge jobs is um, we've developed Accudocs, which is the world's first uh, self-service translation technology for individual clients, customers wanting to translate their personal identification documents. Because I, I realize it doesn't matter what country someone is from, doesn't matter their level of education or so on. They already know what their documents say. Um, and especially with the Australian extract template extract translation templates all that really needs to be entered is is names dates of births parents names addresses and, and basic information like this um now some of these customers are paying up to a hundred dollars a page to get this done when in fact it's information they already know so our, our software Acudox um has guides them through the process of entering the required fields into extract templates cutting the time for translators to complete jobs within one to three minutes without the need for calls or emails. So Acudox um, is a revolution, we say, a revolution in speed for delivering certified uh, translations. We have a customer-centered uh, approach. Um, the, the entire process is transparent where the, the customer chooses whether they want to do it themselves, whether they want to send it to the translator or whether or not they want to get a full translation for a set fee. Um, rather than doing a, a template translation. Um, it accepts online payments, prepayments for the job. So when you're sent the job, it's already been paid. Uh, all the bookkeeping and invoicing has already been taken care, for, care of for you. Um, you're able to set your own prices. Um, it's simple and easy to use. Um, it, we, we cover proofreading and editing and revision of the work. Um, yeah, it's free for, for translators as well. Um, and incorporates its own messaging functionality. Um, and of course, we, we got this quote from Dr. Erica Gonzalez as well, stating that Acudox is a unique system that has the potential to become a global in, innovative tool. Um, well, we've only released it in Australia so far, but eventually 
we hope that will be the case. So thank you to everyone for joining our presentation today. I hope we can afford a few extra minutes for you to answer any questions that are still there. Um, these are my contact details. And if you want to learn more about AccuDocs, please have a look up the top. Um, but meanwhile, if we have any questions, I'll be happy to help. Uh, definitely. So we, we did hit the 90 minute mark. Those of you that want to stick around, um, you know, uh, if Dylan's happy to answer some questions as well, we'll keep asking Absolutely. them. Um, cool. Those of you that can't stick around, uh, please, it's, it's fine. The recording will keep going. So you can go back and watch the recording when you get access tomorrow. All right. I've still got quite a few questions. My apologies. I'm not going to be able to ask all of them. Um, quickly. And if you don't mind, Dylan, let's just uh, fire through these. Can you okay. talk more about machine translation? How often should a professional translator use it? Just a comment maybe on that one. Uh, it's, it, is, it is good as a guide. It is good as a hint. Um, I my, my Personally, I'll have it as a, a hint below, but I would never have the machine uh, translation uh, entered into the segment. Um, so I, I think it's good to translate afresh, but you can have a look at the machine translation segment down below, but it makes things complicated when you insert the machine translated um, result into the segment that you're working on. Um, and that might end up sounding more like machine translation, which people are quite against these days. But it, I think it's good to have it as a hint below. Yep. So once you start using a CAT tool, you'll see that the uh, the machine translation is offered as a hint there for you. So you can just have a look and see how much of it you want to use or if you want to use it as all, at all. Yeah. Um, thank you, Dylan, for sharing all these with us. Thank you to all graduates for running the session. Very informative. Thank you, Parisa. Indeed. Uh, lots of thank yous coming through. How can we access AccuDocs and how much for subscription? Um, it's free. Um, and go to accudocs.com.au. Have a look. Very good, thank you. How do you keep track of your in-work jobs? I Now I use uh, the email platform called Superhuman. Um, I'm able to have a split inbox just for work and I highlight the ones that I'm working on or um, when they have been finished, I'll move them to uh, a PO job and uh, or invoicing inbox. Yeah, but so, I mean, there are a lot of different ways that people use project management tools, um, and there's a, a variety of options. But I try to keep everything um, within the same platform. Otherwise, you've, you've got five different platforms open. Thank you. Very quick one. Do you set up your profile? Sorry, with ProZ.com profile, do you set it up in the target language, or does it have to be in English, regardless of which translation direction you are doing? Pros.com gives you an option to uh, do your profile in another language. So you can add a tab and it'll have your profile, whatever you write in the in the second language. And, and you, you chose to do yours in English, but you had a video in where you spoke in Thai so that they can actually see your level of Thai yeah. as well. So mixing and matching. That, that video wasn't made especially, particularly for pros.com, but that was part of my um, marketing for, for Australian clients. Uh, for Thai clients here in Australia, sorry. Um, so it, it, it was relevant, so I added it to my pros.com profile. Very good. A quick question from Gagan. Uh, do you get offered subtitling work through ProZ for big production houses? I've always wondered how to have them on board. Um, um, I've rates... stayed away yeah. from, from subtitling because it has always been cutthroat rates and they never require a, a, a let's say, a fully, let's say, fully accredited translator to do it. So I, it, it was always too much hassle than it was worth. There's a lot of in fan work involved with subtitling, isn't there? Um, and it's always a race to the bottom. There's a lot of fans doing it. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that kind of, unless you're doing it, you know, for a government organization and for a, uh, yeah. a public service announcement and whatnot, you know, for films and things like that, unfortunately, um, it is a race to the bottom and uh, they don't necessarily look for the highest qualified. Do they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, do you keep a record of the words you translate from Thai or those you translate into English, like your word count wise? Do you, which ones do you keep? My, my word count, I, I have a disclaimer at the bottom of my pros.com web uh, page saying this, this number is an estimation by um, 
you know, dividing my total earnings for that year by my minimum rate. So it's a ballpark figure. Uh, do you see machine translation taking off with work from human translators in the near future? It's, that's a complicated question. Um, what I have noticed, let's say in the, the seven years of doing clinical trial translation work, um, in, in the old days, we would get maybe 10%, 100, uh, say 10%, 100% matches. 10% of the document would be 100%. Um, these days, it's getting more over 50% is is 100% match. So rather than just machine translation, I think the big agencies are spot on with using translation memories, which is, um, you know, human translations that have been uploaded into the agency's translation memory. Um, yeah, so I think there's 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 more likelihood that it's a mix and match of both with uh, machine translation utilizing translation memory um, results and coming up with an intelligent response. That's right. Very good. Thank you. So I think we really need to do a little bit of uh, research on what is machine translation, what is translation memory, um, and and how they uh, affect our work. So uh, again, you can have a look at that introduction to translation technology module I was talking to you about that talks to you about all of those. Uh, where did you get your licensed version of STL Trados? You already answered that. They gave yeah. it to you almost, almost for free. Really oh, cheap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, they sell it for seven hundred dollars um, retail, which is a waste. It's so expensive, but. I mean, I, I paid for my first copy of WordPress Pro, and the first uh, the first project I had with it was worth double what I paid for it. So you know, unless you're in the yeah. game, you can't play. It is it is uh, an investment, let's say. And also, just keep in mind, anything you spend on your business is uh, tax deductible, right, Dylan? Yes, absolutely. Don't forget. Um, all right, thank you. Do you have any agencies who require you not to use any MT at all? Gene, I don't know if you yeah. mean machine translation or CAT tool. Um, yeah, they, they are. Yes, definitely. Um, in that case, you should turn off your connection to Google Translate or, or whatever you have connected. Yep, so within CAT tools, you can actually connect different machine translation tools. Um, so you can disconnect it is what Dylan's saying, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, one last one. I'm unable to find where I can see if there are any open questions in my language. I think um, this came quite a while ago. Uh, uh, it's about the, the, the kudos. Uh, like, kudos. like I said, the, the, the year that I, I became, I, I wrote the most kudos, it was the year that I asked the most questions. So if your language pair isn't active, go ahead, start start looking for, for challenging terms to, to challenge your, your um, colleagues. Um, and also, if you are already familiar or, or friends with, you know, other colleagues here, you can have little, uh, let's say, kudos, kudos um, tests with one another and, and challenge each other. Uh, friendly and both of you will be able to uh, let's say achieve better positions on, on the directory. Uh, sorry Jean's come back and said yes it is for confidentiality reasons that ask not to use machine translation. Do you mean translation memory Jean? Um, I don't see how machine translation would affect confidentiality. I, I see that often Sati where um, they're worried about the uh, segments or the content going up into the cloud or you know, into I the see. ether. Of, of Google's um, intelligence. So yeah, I, I do see that often, um, especially for co confidential client, uh, clients. But those those are the kind of documents that um, MT doesn't help very much with anyway. Thank you very much. I hope uh, we were able to answer those questions, Gene. Why do organizations like WHO use free translations through translators without borders? Uh, well, I guess to, to keep costs low. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can't. So that, but I mean, it's potentially an avenue where um, students wanting to gain experience can can yep. Yep. get get that kind of experience as well. For my language pair, there has never been much content on translations without borders, um, and yeah, so so I was never able to fully utilize that. Um, look, I'll, I'll comment a little bit on that. I did a lot of pro bono work when I first got my uh, translation credentials, and that was to build the work that was for experience 
and mm. you know for Nati um, recertification I had to do certain amount of words and I just wasn't getting enough work or well I wasn't even looking for it that much I guess because I was in another industry back then um, but you know it made me it gain experience get the word count up and you know to be able to then put it onto your um, CV and on your cover letter and things like that I think um, yeah. you know when you are working uh, for someone like uh, Translators Without Borders, it does definitely help you gain that experience. But also some people like to, um, you know, do things for community and do things for um, such uh, charity organisations. Uh, and it's definitely a good way to help us build the experience as well. All right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Dylan. Uh, sorry if we have dried out Hi, your sir. throat last uh, 100 minutes or so. <laughs> Thank you for all your questions. Well, I, a lot of questions uh, came in um, and we really appreciate your time as well today. And Dylan, thank you so much for your presentation. I think uh, it, it shows a really good way to how to get into the international market, you know, uh, at least gives us an idea to get our feet in through the door and then hopefully um, learn a little bit through your experiences as well. Thank you, Fatih. And I just wanted to say again, this is uh, International Translation Day. So um, kudos to all my, my friends and colleagues. We have uh, here in the corner, we have St. Jerome looking over our shoulder. He, he is the, the patron saint of uh, translators who, who translated the Vulgate. So this is my, my inspiration to work every day as well. And indeed, so happy International Translation Day, and hopefully, um, with Dylan's help today, we're tapping, we'll be able to tap into the international market as well. Um, thank you so much for your attendance today. Make sure to check out our website uh, for more training and PD opportunities. Um, like we said, uh, you can have a look at the Introduction to Translation Technology module um, uh, that was designed and delivered by uh, Macquarie University. Uh, please do take care, stay safe, and uh, we hope to see you uh, in the next uh, webinar. Take care and all the best.